Well, thank you everyone for showing up at the webinar. Uh, today's opening webinar is Stored Solutions with Multipathing Fiber Channel Targets with Zen. So what we'll be setting up is configuring the DSS V6 for the fiber channel HBAs that we'll have, and we're going to set them up in target mode uh, with our Q logic. We're going to use the 4 gig in this, uh, 4 gigabit fiber channel in this uh, scenario, although the 8 gigs will work as well. What we're going to do then, we'll create the fiber channel volumes, uh, then set up the alias and worldwide name for the fiber channel HBA. And once we do that, then we'll go ahead and, uh, and complete the aliases for the channel fiber channel group and assign them for the fiber channel group. And then what we'll do is set up the multipath in the Zen, and I'll show you what we need to do there, and then verify the connection with the Zen to create the virtual machine. Well, today's October 4th, 2011. By the way, a lot of you know me. I'm Todd Maxwell, Director of Technical Sales, along with our sales team. Okay, what we're seeing here is I've got a DSS v6 set up. And by the way, I'm using the latest version, which is 5622. You can see the build right here. Um, and of course, uh, we have uh, in our DSS v6, uh, I have a QLogic fiber channel, HBA. Let's go ahead and make sure that this set up. One of the first things you want to do is in the setup, in the fiber channel section, here you want to make sure that the fiber channel is set for target mode. You notice there's an I and a T. Now, you can uh, set it while the system is up and running and there is no reboot. If it defaults, because typically it does, you'll see it, see it set for I, for the initiator mode. In this case, when it boots up and you haven't configured it, make sure you select T and then apply it for both those ports. So here, this 2462, the QLogic, or known as the QE2462, has a dual port on the back end. And here I've configured both of them for target mode. Uh, I've seen a lot of issues where people forget about this. They immediately think that uh, installing DSSV6 it defaults to target mode. It does not. So it defaults to initiator mode. So make sure you set this before moving forward on creating your fiber channel volume. So once this is completed, uh, then at this point we want to go to configuration in volume manager and volume groups. And here we've already have our volume groups created. You can see them as they start to list up. We have unit zero, we identify down here, uh, S000, and unit S002. And of course, there's some other volumes that we can create that are different from this session. Well, what we're working with right now, we're going to be working with the S000 unit, the first volume group that I have. Here on the left, you'll see it, volume group 00. And I've already created a fiber channel volume, just speeds up things. But just in case many of you do not know on how to create volume from DSSV6, whether it be a NAS or iSCSI, fiber channel snapshot, I'll just briefly go over it. Uh, you just need to go to the action bar, and here is your first option, which is to set up a new NAS volume. Create the uh, iSCSI fiber channel volume, and also snapshots. So what What I've done, just to simplify the channel volume, and for VMware and Zen, I typically like uh, to use the default, which is the block size. Normally in Microsoft, you probably want to select the 4K size, which is the 4096 block size. Um, and then I didn't initialize. The reason being is that can take time. So it adds some data protection to that the volume is is verified and clean. So, but when you do do an initialization, please know that if, you know, one terabyte doing a low level format, as you well know, can take and resources. And that's the reason why we have this rate set in here. So slow would be something if you already have just on your system and you want to make sure that they're not impeded by some of the performance issues that you will have if you set it to fast. Tip of a brand new system, you probably want to start off with setting fast. That way it'll be finished quicker than it will be on a slow path. 
So then that's when you add your total capacity, and then you hit the apply button, and your next fiber channel volume, uh, volume, logical volume will be listed uh, under the volume manager here. So right now I have uh, LC001 set up as channel volume, and we'll go right ahead to the configuration into the, and here we'll go to the group. Now in the beginning, you're going to first see the default group. This is what's known as a public group. So the public group is where everybody's able uh, to see the volumes. If I click on here to this default public group, and by the way, you cannot change the name. You also know public group. That's what we can add by the groups, and that's what we're going to do. But you can see that if uh, you did want to use for everybody the volume, uh, in this case, what we want to do is we want to create a private group. Here, let's go to create a new private group. We'll call it Zen MPIO because that's what the topic's about. And click the apply button. And on the left, you'll see the new fiber channel group that we've created. Here it is, Zen MPIO. Okay. Now, once we have that, you can see that it's starting to list the logical volume. Uh, by default, it does use the write back. Very rare instances you might want to use write read only or write through, but typically uh, taking the deep where you want to be. And so we're going to select it, and we notice it starts off with line zero. So if you add additional fiber channel logical volumes, they'll be listed. We add them as line one and so forth. And again, you can create multiple uh, private groups. So you can send MPIO dash A or, or B or C or four bases or have them separate even for create other groups for, let's say, Microsoft or even VMware. So it's not just restricted to what we're talking about. Uh, you can create many uh, fiber channel groups and add as many fiber channel volumes as you wish. Now the next step is that we need to have a it's known worldwide name. Uh, this is an alias for the HBA host bus adapter. Now, this would be the host bus adapter that's going to be on our Zen server. Typically, when you want to research what your host bus adapter is, uh, most of the vendors have this on the back end of the HBA. So, all you need to do is uh, reference to that and enter it here. If you have Difficulties of what that is, uh, every function of ESSV6 has a question mark. So here, if you click on this, uh, quick question mark, it will state pretty much some information about uh, what is the worldwide name. So basically, it's a unique identifier in the Fire Channel Storage Network. So the, the basically, the name what we're looking for is this right here. And it's basically on a fixed 64-bit name assignment by the manufacturer. And each is registered with IEEE to ensure that it's globally unique. So I've known that I've already pre up, so I'm going to be using, uh, I've created a naming convention for this system. Uh, my Zen has a Q logic 2462, just as I do have on my DSSV6. So I've named it a Zen 4 gigabit uh, port 0. And of course, I have presets for them. So here is port 0's worldwide name right here. So I'm going to select this one. And the tool will need to add the second port. So here we'll do Zen 4, uh, 4 gigabyte port 1. So I already have my worldwide port name. So here we go. We're going to add, I think it's 32 or 6. I think it's, uh, yeah, 36, AD1, F1, 0, F1. Okay. And by the way, you can remove these. And just in case you didn't know, this will simply you can remove them if you have many. Uh, but now we're ready to add the worldwide names alias to the fiber channel group that we've added. So here it gives you the list. Uh, you can add more to them. 
With this specific one, we are going to add both of these because we're going to need them for the MPIO for the multi-pathing. And now that both of them are uh, in the grouping and assigned uh, for this logical volume, at this point we're ready to go into the Zen server. Let's go ahead and bring this down. I've brought up my Zen server. Here, point, let everybody know, when I first started this, I started researching it, uh, just like the other uh, virtualization servers that we're using, uh, VMware and Microsoft. In the Zen Center, you want to make sure that you're in maintenance mode before you enter the uh, uh, multipathing. So what you want to do is once you get onto your Zen server is right-click on the server itself and on the Zen server then enter to maintenance mode. Now, once that's complete, then right-click um, and then select the properties down on the bottom. And here you can see multipathing. This is where you want to select and make sure that both paths are seen. Okay. So now that we want to make sure that is enabled, you can right-click on again, and here you can see it active and that's what you want to be to see. Now let's go connect to our storage. So at this point what we want to do is want to write uh, basically want to uh, get out of the exit maintenance mode and then we'll our storage pool. This will now allow you not able to see the new storage, just keep in mind you might be still in the maintenance mode. Let's go ahead and click on new storage. And by the way, you'll see that I have an NFS already, that's in case if I want to do uh, for my ISOs for my operating systems, then I can go ahead and add, add them later on. And here you could do this on NFISO. Uh, if I use my DSS, I basically configured an NFS share uh, called files, and I've already set one up right now. And if what you would need to do is if you, whatever naming convention you want to use, you can say DSS, uh, NFS for your shares. And then of course, what you want to do is add the IP address of the DSS v6. So in this case, I would have 0, uh, 192.168.0.221. Then you go colon slash, and of course, I have a share called file. And that way you can utilize your ISO images to uh, boot up and install your virtual. So again, we're going to go right here to new storage, right click on the Zen server, and we'll select the hardware H is utilized for the um, fiber channel H base that we have to connect to our fiber channel target. Uh, if you're using ID, obviously you would select the software ISO. So at this point, it's going to be probing for the lines. And here's where we see our 55 gig that we've created. We're going to create a naming agent, so uh, DSS MPIO. And then we're going to click on the target. And here the button finish will show up. We're going to select format. Keep in mind, if, if you had something pre-existing, you probably want to repair it before you did that or you'll wipe out your data. So be aware of that. Now, if we click on the fiber channel target that we've selected and created their storage, here you'll see with the exam, you'll see right here the status and then multipath. What you want to see on the multipathing is two of two paths. So you kind of want to verify that before continuing creating your uh, virtual machines. So in this case, what I want to show you, usually that's typically it for the, if you want some additional information, go ahead with uh, Zen's documentation and get into their shell and uh, command line interface and be able to uh, assign different parameters. But on this level, this is really 
quick and does it. Tell you what, I'm going to add a little bit more caveat to this. Let's go ahead and create a virtual machine and let's try to remove one of the ports from the DSS to see if it's still installing. So I just want to add this little variation to the end of this webinar. So create a new virtual machine. And I'm going to select basically other install. I'm going to select the, we'll name it, uh, kind of, let's say a Linux OS on there. And here is where I have my ISO image. We'll use the Ubuntu. Um, this is the uh, ISO image library they created from Zen that we talked about previously. Give it some additional memory. Now we're going to add a uh, storage for what we're going to install to onto. We're going to select the DSS MPI that we've created for that fiber channel volume. I'll we'll give it about 10 gig. By the way, a lot of information is uh, people ask me, well, can you install DSS as well as a virtual machine? And you can. Uh, I just have a minimum of two gig for the operating system and you add another storage. So you don't want to make it a one big storage pool. So let's say uh, you have a terabyte, uh, thinking that you're going to be able to use all of the terabyte after creating the two gigabit volume for DSS. So you want to create different uh, storage pools for it. To used as the volume group. One of our webinars are done, so let's go ahead and complete it. So again, if you wanted to add additional storage uh, for, let's say, DSS or for the other uh, operating system that we have here, you can add more storage input capacity. It'll be in volume as well. And we're going to use network zero, and let's start it automatically. All right, now let's give this a, a second to build and create. It's creating a disk on the bottom. You see it here, it's creating disks. And here's the virtual machine that we've created. And here we have the option now to select and start our install. Now what we're going to do is we're going to let this install, and then what we're going to do is disable one of the ports on DSS uh, on the worldwide name on that we're going to take one of the aliases out. So let's go ahead and continue the install. And we're ready to at this point. It's still loading. So I had an issue before. Now it looks like it's it's coming back up. We need to do a little troubleshooting. But let's go ahead and still see if we can go ahead and get this the MPIO to show you the demonstration. So I think it's really my setup with the virtual machine and how it's obtaining the ISO image. So let's go ahead and stop the machine. Let's do a force shutdown. Okay, now, now let's go ahead and try it again. Let's look at our properties.
And let's go ahead and turn on the virtual machine. There we go. All right, now at this point, installing, let's go ahead and bring up DSSV6. And here we're going to disable, let's say, port zero. Now, what we should be showing is only one path for the installation of Ubuntu. You can see it's still working. This is the value of MPIO providing some path failover on multi-pathing and, of course, also for performance as well. So you can see we're installing, we're, we're still working, and we can get and read the uh, port back in. Let's go ahead and finish our installation. go ahead and add the other uh, port back in and then we'll remove the port one. So we're going to add the port one and hit apply. Go back to our installation. The information right here. Add this in. And we're still working. And now while it's doing that, let's go ahead and remove one. Fly. And you can see the installation is still continuing. So this is really, really cool where the multi-pathing is really a value to have, especially with five channel, you'll, you'll gain performance. Uh, we're looking at doing some more webinars to show you the performance values of using multi-path. Also with iSCSI, I think for uh, just purchasing an extra dual port for the um, HBAs with the SSV6. Now you can use the QLogic HBAs with the Zen. Um, one reason why I have is you could, I don't have the X, but you can use that for the Zen system. But uh, as you can see that it's worth mentioning to to have these dual ports uh, for that extra port multipathing. If we look over here, you see on the DSS MPIO storage pool that we created, you can see only one of tool paths are active. So let's go ahead and add that other path to see if it self heals itself. And updates with the two out of two paths. And here you can see instantly both are working. So that's pretty much it for the uh, using multipathing with the Zen uh, and also with the DSS V6 with the QLogic Fiber Channel HBAs that I'm currently working with. Well, thank you everybody for joining the OpenE webinar. Uh, we'll be coming up with new webinars planned in the future, and uh, we'll keep them posted and email about the next plan. Take care, everyone. Bye bye.